2005, details of over 350 Montagnard prisoners were published by the Human Rights Watch, while reports emerged that Montagnard prisoners were dying from abuse and torture. Hundreds of Montagnard villagers would be arrested, beaten, and tortured. What do you think, my luck? He hid right here. Who did that to you? The police. The, the Vietnamese Cong Police Vietnamese. Prisoners were forced to denounce the Montagnard Foundation on Vietnamese state television. Jana Baum would be sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. Kasor Croy would be sentenced to 12 years imprisonment. Vietnamese authorities threatened to kill Koksor's mother and she was paraded on Vietnamese television. She had refused to denounce her son and one of her other sons took her place. And he can be seen reading the documents given to him by the authorities. For her silence, Koksor's mother, who was in her 80s, was beaten and had several ribs broken. Sor Croc was publicly beaten and given a seven-year prison term. After that, the Vietnamese officer, Vietnamese soldier, and Vietnamese army, um, they came in the Montagnard village and arrested them many Montagnard people because the demonstration, religious, uh, no freedom, and confiscation the land, the Montagnard people. After that, Vietnamese officer and arrest Montagnard some people, they kill and they, um, put in the jail in the, in the prison. The demonstration would be repressed as security forces undertook harsh reprisals. In the first few weeks alone, hundreds of Montagnards would be arrested and brutally tortured. Prisoners were forced to denounce the Montagnard Foundation on Vietnamese state television. Jana Baum would be sentenced to 13 years imprisonment. Kasor Croy would be sentenced to 12 years imprisonment. Vietnamese authorities threatened to kill Koksor's mother and she was paraded on Vietnamese television. She had refused to denounce her son and one of her other sons took her place. And he can be seen reading the documents given to him by the authorities. For her silence, Koksor's mother, who was in her 80s, was beaten and had several ribs broken. This is the notorious Tri Bao Sao prison in Hanam province, northern Vietnam. This man spent over three years in prison there for trying to flee to Cambodia. After his release, he was granted asylum in the United States. Um, they slapped both ears and he was unconscious. He fell down on the floor. They pick him up again, they um, shock his body, and then they tied him up and hung him. Um, in the prison was a small room, and 70 people stay in there. In 2005, details of over 350 Montagnard prisoners were published by the Montagnard Foundation and Human Rights Watch, while reports emerged that Montagnard prisoners were dying from abuse and torture. He hid right here. Who did that to you? The police. The, the Vietnamese Cong Police Vietnamese. Okay. Um, after the Cambodian police received the money from the Vietnamese people, um, that night the Vietnamese police uh, pick him up and tied him in the car mm -hmm. and yeah, tied him up and beat him and um, they get electric shock, shock his ear like both sides.
Um, they slapped both ears and he was unconscious. He fell down on the floor. They picked him up again. They um, shocked his body and then they tied him up and hung him. Um, he said that when the UN came, they couldn't get rich to them because they um, they put the mountain yard prisoners all the way in the like far in the corner somewhere. But when the pre um, the UN came, they pretend to give them food, a box of food like soup, noodle. But after the uh, UN left, they would get it back, take all back. Yeah, you know, I go up oh. to Okay. Um, the Cambodian police uh, have guns, yeah, electric shock. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. They shock them and uh, beat them up. And they, the, all the police were all around the places, the houses, you know, and force them to get on the bus. Uh, but a lot of people just cry. They don't want to get on the bus. That's why they shock them and beat them up. And um, those people who were already unconscious, they would pull them and put them on the bus. And and the UN watch all this. Yeah. We can get up and then you like get and Um, the day. The day before Cambodian police came, uh, a guy, UN guy named Alden, came in at three o'clock in the afternoon and tell them to pack up their stuff and say that tomorrow the police, Cambodian police, gonna come in and get you guys and put you guys in the bus. And the next day, early in the morning at six o'clock, he came in. He opened the door for the Cambodian police and give them permission to. Hit them. Yeah. Um, he said that when the UN came, they couldn't get rich to them because they're um, they put the mountain yard prisoners all the way in the like far in the corner somewhere but when the pre um, the UN came they pretend to give them food a box of food like soup noodle but after the uh, UN left they would get it back take all back Yeah, you know, go up to it. Okay. Um, the Cambodian police uh, have guns, yeah, electric shock. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. They shock them and um, beat them up. And they, the, all the police were all around the places, the houses, you know, and force them to get on the bus. Uh, but a lot of people just cry. They don't want to get on the bus. That's why they shock them and beat them up. And um, those people who were already unconscious, they would pull them and put them on the bus. And and the UN watch all this. Yeah. We can get up and then you like get and Um, the day. The day before Cambodian police came, uh, a guy, UN guy named Alden, came in at three o'clock in the afternoon and tell them to pack up their stuff and say that tomorrow the police, Cambodian police, gonna 
come in and get you guys and put you guys in the bus and the next day early in the morning at six o'clock he came in he opened the door for the Cambodian police and give them permission to hit them